are remakes and remasters worth the full Australian price of $80 a game? That is the question of the day. And unfortunately, it's not as black and white as I may have made it seem there in that statement. Now, you may have just shouted straight up a resounding no, never. And that's okay. That is your personal opinion. And in your personal situation, that is the correct decision. But it is such a personal decision. There are so many factors that go into deciding whether a game is worth it for you or not. And I just want to go over some of those today. And hopefully by the end of the video, people on either side of this argument might gain a little bit more empathy for the opposition. At least that's the hope anyway. This is obviously a very topical subject at the moment, because by the time this video releases, we will have our grubby little paws on the 1000 Year Door remake, and Luigi's Mansion 2 remaster will not be very far away. So as far as Nintendo is concerned, at least, we do have a couple of remakes and remasters to look forward to. And just a little sneak peek at another video I'm making. I don't think these are gonna be the last remakes, remasters we see from Nintendo this year. Maybe you should hit that subscribe button down there so you uh, don't miss out on the video you just got a sneak peek of. Mm. Or not, that's fine too. Okay, so straight up, I just want to go over some of the reasons that I think Nintendo thinks it's okay to charge $80 for these games. And I might not agree, and you might not agree with a lot of them. I'm just saying this is probably what Nintendo thinks. So straight up, I want everyone to understand, and this should go without saying, but it does take time and money to produce remakes or remasters. We're not just burning the MP3 file you downloaded from LimeWire onto a CD and all of a sudden your digital music has a physical copy now. It is not that easy. Plenty of resources go into these remakes and remasters, especially if it's a remake. The idea is that you're building everything from the ground up with a new system. Okay, you don't have to worry about things like plot points and art style, and a lot of the work is done for you, but nobody magically presses a button and ports it somewhere else. That's just not how technology works. I wish it was, but it's not. Nintendo and all the other companies that produce remakes and remasters obviously want to make their money back that they've spent remaking or remastering something. For some reason, people tend to forget this. The internet does, I don't know, maybe it's just the trolls that I somehow interact with, but money, things take money to do. The Nintendo Switch itself is a huge factor in why they're releasing these games for full price. You've got to remember that the Nintendo Switch has sold over 141 million units and speaking specifically about thousand year door that is on a system that only sold about 22 million units that's like one seventh of the amount of units that have sold that means that one in seven potentially switch owners have never even heard of a thousand year door let alone had a chance to play it so if there's that huge player base that has never played it, all of a sudden, all the arguments about remasters and remakes go out the window because to them, yeah, okay, it is still obviously a remake, but if you've never played it before or had the opportunity to, then of course you're gonna drop $80 on a brand new, brand new Mario game. That is the reason I'm picking it up because I never had a chance to play a thousand year door on the GameCube. I was not one of those 22 million people that owned one, and I don't have any way of playing it now. So I'm going to get the remake. Simple as that. And for a lot of people, it is as simple as that. Just jumping a bit ahead here, we will talk about this later, but if you already own the game, then the answer to the question of the day is likely no. And that's fair enough. You've already played it. 
The other thing to keep in mind is that Nintendo isn't just out to recoup their money that they spent making this remaster. The real question there is how much can we charge for this game? If they can charge $10 for it and their projected amount of sales, $10 is going to cover all the money they put into it, they still won't sell it for $10 because they can sell it for more and people will still buy and those projected sales won't drop because of the price increase. That is the main factor. It's just how can they sell it to us consumers? What is the maximum that us consumers are willing to pay? And I can see it now. A lot of people are going to be like, that's why we need to stop buying remakes and remasters so that this situation doesn't happen when Nintendo thinks they can charge $80 for it. But unfortunately, they just can. Most people will have not have played these games. In fact, there is an entire generation of people that weren't even alive when the GameCube was around who now have the opportunity to play some of these games on the Switch. The simple fact is Nintendo can charge $80, so they will charge $80. Now, this isn't necessarily inherently a bad thing. I actually really like the fact that Nintendo values their IP. I say it all the time at work, people ask me, why is Mario Kart still $80? And it's because Nintendo values their IP. Quick side tangent here. I bought the new Avatar game, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, really wanted to play it, picked it up for full price on release. That came out early December, I think, 2023. Within two weeks, that game was on a Christmas discount. It was discounted like 30 or $40. And I felt like the idiot for buying it at full price. In my situation, that company has just screwed me over because I could have just waited two weeks and got it for like two thirds of the price. Nintendo does not do that. Their games do not drop in value years afterwards. And it's because they value their IPs. And this is really important to understand, especially when we're talking about the Thousand Year Door and Luigi's Mansion 2, it's Mario. What does Nintendo value above all else? It's Mario. So of course they're gonna charge full price for this. If Darren is over there buying his game for his three kids, Darren doesn't care about gaming. He just wants to keep his kids happy. He picks up Luigi's Mansion 2 for $40. Let's just say it's half price, $40. Two years later, Luigi's Mansion 4 comes out on the new system and it's 80 bucks. Darren's gonna be upset because the last one was only 40 bucks. What is this? What's, what's this crap? And working in a video game store, a lot of people are like that. You've got to remember that you and me are not your average consumer here. Most people aren't in the gaming space. They're buying games for their kids or they're just casual. They don't watch YouTube videos about them, you know? And in those people's minds, Mario is worth $80. And in Nintendo's mind, Mario is worth $80. So that's why I think Nintendo is charging $80 for these games. That's why I think that that is the price they decided on for all the reasons I just listed. It doesn't answer the question of the day though, does it? Are they worth that amount of money? That was the question. And the answer is all up to you. I'm sorry, I can't make decisions for you. Trust me, I wish there was someone who could make decisions for you. I suck at making decisions. So I did already mention this, but first and foremost, do you have the game already? Have you played Luigi's Mansion 2 on the 3DS? If the answer is yes, then likely this remake, remaster, is not worth full price to you. Of course it's not. You've played it, you had your fun with it, you've moved on. You've played Luigi's Mansion 3 now, and that's enough. So no, it's not worth it to you. But also, you are definitely not the target audience for a game like this. Again, 
when you've got consoles, one that sold 140 million units and one that sold 75 or whatever it is, that's a big discrepancy there. So there are plenty of people that haven't played it. Now, often I fall into these categories. I was not alive for the NES and the SNES. So any remakes on that, absolutely I'm interested in. Super Mario RPG. Yeah, okay. You can tell that it's a Super Nintendo game. Absolutely you can. Feels a little bit dated by today's standards, but is it still a good game? Yes. Have I played it? No. That's really all I need to know personally, but there are definitely more factors. What does this remake or remaster do? How is it better than the original? Because even if you've played the original, maybe there's a little bit of something something in here to make it worth it for you. Oftentimes there's DLC included. It becomes the definitive edition because you've got all this essentially free DLC now. Has it fixed a lot of bugs that the original game might have had? Because remember, before this always online landscape that we're in now, it wasn't as easy to just fix a bug in your game. If your game had been shipped, then likely that bug is going to be in there forever. So is the experience better as a whole? And the most obvious ones are, of course, the graphical overhaul and potential quality of life improvements. Let's take Super Mario RPG, for example. Being able to auto save or save wherever you want. Absolutely invaluable. Does it make the game worth $80? No, but if you've got enough of those little things, then maybe. And we'll continue using Super Mario RPG as an example. The graphics. I am personally a huge fan of the 1632-bit era. So sometimes I do think the original SNES games look a bit better, but again, this is personal preference. Maybe you think they look, oh my God, so brilliant. Bought this game into the modern day. I need it. Now, look, I'm not claiming that they're all the factors that come into play, but they're definitely the main ones. And the point of this video is really it's up to you to decide whether it is worth it or not. The simple fact is that Nintendo can sell these for $80, so they will. If you're looking for more budget Nintendo titles, they are out there. We just got Endless Ocean, which launched for $60 here in Australia. We obviously had the Metroid Prime remaster, which launched for the equivalent $60 here in Australia. So I think 40 American or something along those lines. Nintendo obviously didn't think they could sell that for $80. I'm not an insider at Nintendo, but I would be willing to bet money that they value the Mario IP more so than they value the Metroid one. So all of this, with all of this in mind, all I want everyone to do is to just not be a dick about it. If somebody wants to pick up a remaster for $80, for the love of God, let them. It's okay. There's a multitude of reasons why this person might be picking it up. If you do not want to pick up the $80 remaster, then by all means, please don't. You do not have to no one is forcing you to. If you do have the means to play those old versions of the games, then just do that. There is nothing wrong with that at all. But I want to hear your guys' answers to the question of the day in the comments below. I'm going to say as a general thing, are remakes, remasters worth the full Australian price of $80? The answer is, it depends. What a shite answer, hey? <laughs>